Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about PCGS and NGC, which one's better, and uh, also cracking open our beautiful undergraded PCGS submission. Anyway, let's get started. NGC are raising their rates to an all time high. Um, yes, about a week ago, we were told that our rates would increase almost to the same proportion as PCGS's rates. Um, so what does this mean for you? What does this mean for me? This means for me that I'm only going to be using PCGS. And the reason why is because, one, uh, you know, they have a better quality of product in my opinion. I like the holder. I like the true views. Um, I kind of like who grades the coins sometimes. Um, and also... The highest comps uh, between the two grading companies, uh, the highest comps is going to be PCGS about every single time. Um, and they let a lot of less things through in terms of issues with coins of questionable color, cleaning, everything uh, basically that PCGS does is very strict. When you look at both sides of the coin, wink wink nudge nudge, I think PCGS has a better product, better service, and I'm not going to be paying the same price uh, over at NGC for a lesser quality product, more things that they allow through that are of issue, and I my coins just don't sell as easily when they're in NGC slug. Arguably, I think NGC should change their service level, uh, make things better um, for the for the consumer, either with wait times, um, photos of their coins. I know they're starting to do that and get it down pretty well. Um, be a little bit more strict on certain coins as well. Just a lot of things that you can change before you ask for a price bump in your grades. So I think this move was a little bit preemptive. I think they could have done something um, to enhance their product in terms of its value in the marketplace before adding this uh, price increase. So I don't know if this is the best move on, from my opinion, but like I said, I want to hear you guys' thoughts below. And the way we're going to understand if this was a good idea or not is uh, time, right? So, I, like I said, I'm on Instagram, I'm at shows, I'm on Facebook, and the overall consensus is not a good thing. And so, the, what's going to actually end up happening is that, you know, either they're going to have the same amount of business, people will accept it, um, or they're going to have less business because people just don't think they should send their coins to them anymore. It's just not worth uh, the money that they have to spend. Like I said, though, time will tell. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Um, it will kind of shake up. Uh, the coin community a little bit. PCGS also just released something and told us that we were actually going to wait 60 business days for regular submissions and econ submissions. So we made a video a little bit back, you know, the re most recent submission before this one, um, basically saying we got ours, uh, our coins back at like the 75th business day. And now uh, they're basically upping that. So it used to be like 30 days for regular 45 for econ now it's 60 days for both so both coin companies are on the back burner i mean people are gonna have to wait three four uh five six months sometimes for coins so that's something that's really bothering a lot of people i think that things should start to change i don't understand how uh that we're coming to this point i know that collectibles are rising in terms of their value and people are wanting to submit more often uh, there's a lot of things to consider there but i think anx is going to be a real big uh, player in this space in this next year just because they offer uh, you know a product that's a, a less in the market but people just want their coins authenticated and they don't want to wait so long so I think they're going to have a competitive advantage um, that starts to emerge a little bit um, as time moves forward in 2022. Now let's get to some coins. Um, this submission was pretty bad um, if I'm going to say so myself. Uh, a lot of bad things happened in this submission, but we did talk about two coins in our previous video that we're sending to CAC. Uh, we had an 1882O uh, Morgan Dollar Grade MS65 by PCGS. That one was a pretty good grade. I did think it got that color bump, um, but when you take a look at that reverse, you can see that beautiful pink, a little bit of green there. Um, the coin is just very hard uh, to find tone and very hard to find in gem state. So. Uh, very fortunate uh, to have that coin. We're going to see what CAC says. Um, and the other coin that we have going off to CAC is 1881S that is also reverse mounted. Uh, it's created MS65. The reason why um, I sent that coin in is because the luster was very nice on both sides. But when we take a look at the reverse, you see that pink, um, that yellow, and that kind of really nice blue there. Um, the, 
the luster is pretty nice, like I said, though, and the color is just is just beaming off the coin. So something I really do enjoy about it. Um, the reverse has a lot of hits. I'm sorry, the obverse has a lot of hits, but you know it's it's a part of the process. We're gonna see what uh, John Albany says. So um, yeah, two interesting coins. But let's show you guys the rest of the coins from this submission. Up first, we have this 1963D Franklin half dollar. And if you guys don't know or haven't been watching our videos for very long, we sent this coin in a while back. It got an MS65 grade. And we sent it again, and it got an MS64 grade. Now, this is probably the nicest MS65, MS64, I mean, Franklin dollar I, I've ever seen. I think this coin is 66 all day long. But at this point, I think I'm going to retire the coin. Um, when you take a look at the obverse here, there's not too many hits on the coin. Um, Maybe a, a slight little bit of chatter in the hair there, but I don't see any issues on the obverse. But when you flip over the coin, you do see some hits on the bell there. A hit at the top left of the, you kind of see that like beam that's going across. Um, you kind of see a little hit there as well. But I've gotten coins in 66 holders, Franklin's in 66 holders that look a lot worse than this. Um, so very discouraged by this. I mean, it went from a 65 to a 64. I mean, I just don't understand it, but uh, let's jump into the next coin. Up next is this 1964D um, Roosevelt Dime, graded MS66 by PCGS. Um, I got this, I think, in an NGC slab, and I cracked it out. Um, I thought it was re really nice. Actually, I got it in a PCGS slab, but it didn't have true views, so I cracked it out, sent it back in. I thought it would get a color bump, but it didn't. That's okay. Um, but when I actually look at the true views, they're kind of washed out um, and kind of haphazardly chosen. I'm not trying to be negative in this video, but uh, it's just been uh, not too good as of recently. Just with everything that's been happening, uh, the true views, the, the wait times, everything's been kind of adding up. Uh, but there are a lot of good things in, uh, you know, in the submission. But this one uh, really kind of, I don't know, it kind of hit me. And I'm not too happy about it, but it's the way it is. Are you guys learning anything in this video? Um, you know, what do you guys think of the discussion today? Uh, just a lot of things going on, and uh, we want to hear your perspective down in the comment section below. Uh, please leave a like if you guys want to see more videos from us, uh, and subscribe if you're new because we come out with videos every single week. Coin show stories, um, you know, coin show vlogs, uh, PCGS submissions, and coin tips to help your collecting or your coin dealing. So let's get back to today's video. Up next, I want to show you this 1938D Buffalo Nickel. Uh, the reason why I sent this coin in is because it has very nice color on both sides. When you take a look at the obverse there, you do see some like carbon spots um, to the bottom left, a little bit on his like forehead there, um, right next to the Y as well. But I do enjoy the color. You kind of see the green um, peachy color on the obverse. Uh, the luster is pretty nice as well. Uh, but when you flip over the coin, you can kind of see that green buffalo there, a little bit of blue as well. Um, and um, there's like peachy looking uh, hues in the uh, in the fields there. Uh, pretty problem free reverse, so pretty nice uh, coin. I think the reason why it got a 64 was these spots, so uh, I agree with their grade. Here's an interesting one. This is a 2000 um, American Silver Eagle, grade MS65 by PCGS. Um, I, I sent this coin in because I got it super cheap. I think I got it for like 30 to 40 bucks or something like that. Um, I got it up in Virginia, but um, you know, it's a pretty nice coin. I do enjoy the rainbows um, on, on the obverse. Um, it is a little lackluster, so I could see why they gave it a 65. Um, and there's a, a little bit of uh, issues as well in the fields. Um, you know, it's a decent coin. Um, I see that little bit of terminal around the rim. But when you flip over the coin, I like the uh, reverse a little bit more than the obverse just because uh, the color is a little bit more vibrant um, and there's like that peachy look um, to the center of the coin. So pretty nice coin. Uh, we'll see how this one goes and if it will sell quick. Not too uh, keen on selling more of the new age stuff, but trying to get myself into it, understand the market a little bit more because there are people that like to buy kind of the modern type of tone stuff. We bought this 1916D on eBay for $400. Um, this one is graded Fair 2 by PCGS. This is the grade that I kind of expected. Um, the details, um, you know, there's not very much on the coin. We can just make out the D, um, but uh, when you take a look at the obverse, you can kind of see some interesting spots in the center of the coin. Um, 
not a lot to, not a lot to say about it. I mean, it's a nice original circulated piece. Uh, not too many issues in terms of scratches or anything like that. Um, you know, there's a little bit of darkness in the fields, which I personally like. Um, but when you flip over the coin, um, you can kind of see like every single word is basically gone. Um, but you do make out the mint mark all the way um, underneath those, uh, the wreath, I think is what they call it. But, um, you know, a nice key date when you spend $400 on a coin, wait a few months to get it. Um, and 16 Ds have been rising in price. Uh, I'm very happy about this because it was great authentic. Um, and I now I can sell it at a pretty good uh, premium. Here's a coin I enjoy a lot. This is a 1937S Buffalo Nickel, great MS63 by PCGS. Um, there are a few carbon spots on this coin as well. You can see it right by the eye, a little bit down by the date and on the back of the head there. The reason why I like this coin so much is because it has really nice, vibrant green toning. Uh, and when you check out the video, you're really going to see it pop. Um, I just don't see toning on this that often. Uh, you know, you kind of see some hues on, on buffaloes, but on this nickel, um, the greens are just very vibrant. And I picked this coin up in a different slab. I think it was like an ICG slab, but I'm glad I got a straight grade. I think it's a nice coin. And uh, let me know what you guys think of this one. It's pretty interesting. Up next, I want to show you guys this 1971D Eisenhower dollar. Um, we got this coin for a dollar at, um, I think, what, it was like a garage sale case or something like that. Um, but when we take a look at the coin, I thought it was a pretty problem-free obverse. Um, you know, when you, when you take a look in the light, there's just not many hits on the coin. Um, I think it was, it was pretty nice. Um, it did have a weird kind of tint to it. I do think this coin might have PVC, which kind of, you know, that's kind of why it might have graded so low. Um. But like I said, it's, it is pretty interesting. Not too many hits. I think the luster is pretty decent as well. Um, when you flip over the coin, um, when you take a look right underneath America, you can kind of see some carbon spots on it, um, which might have took it, taken away from the grade as well. So I'm still trying to understand Eisenhower's, how they're graded and everything like that. But um, this coin might be a work in progress or we might just sell it as is. Um, either way, pretty interesting coin. Um, you don't see Eisenhower's this often just because of how terribly they've been treated in the in the past, um, people weren't really a fan of these dollars, and uh, they're starting to grow on me personally, uh, especially with that Rattler set that we were talking about last video. If you guys want another Debbie Downer, I got one right here. This is a 1911 uh, Shield Nickel graded Edge Corrosion Unk Details by PCGS. And uh, you might ask yourselves, where'd you get this coin, Drew? Well, I got it um, from an MS63 NGC slab. So, uh, edge corrosion and uh, the coin is very nice on the obverse as you can see um, it has some pink and greens that's why I kind of wanted that true view um, and when you take a look at the obverse true view which I'm going to show right now um, you know you can really see those colors popping out and that's exactly what what photo I wanted for this coin um, but when I received the grade back of edge corrosion I was just like man you know I, I spent a lot of time effort uh, money trying to find a nice coin like this and it just didn't happen um, so we're gonna have to send it back in see what they say maybe take a trip to NGC I'm not too sure but uh, I really do enjoy the photos hopefully this coin can get in uh, a straight grade holder oh look at this dude look at this so crack this sucker out of a holder if you guys don't know what this is this was the monster tone coin we showed a few videos back I mean dude look at that MS 63 so happy Anyway, got it back. Uh, this coin is now graded Mint State 62. Yes. Ah. Anyway, so when you take a look at the obverse, I like the coin a lot because it has that monster tone color. Um, and I think the major reason why it got a 62 is because you see that giant hit on the face there. And right underneath that, you can see some pretty big scratches. Um, it is what it is. I probably have to get it back into a 63 holder for it to be worth anything anyway in terms of what I want for the coin. But I might just be keeping it in the personal collection for a while so it won't really matter to me. Um, but you can see that really nice green and uh, pink you know, covering half the obverse and then you can actually see the gold and green and blue uh, finishing out the rest. I mean the coin is just a monster. Love it so much. It's a pretty interesting piece. And if you guys haven't checked out that story uh, but the top left, top right, uh, you guys will see that, that video. But uh, when you flip over the coin, um, this is kind of where the head scratcher comes in. There's not really anything wrong with the reverse that I can see. 
Uh, very light touches here and there, but no big scratches, no big issues. So very confused on why this coin did receive a 62. Um, I think this ding on the obverse might have just net graded it, but you know, glad it's in a holder. Glad it has some nice true views. Um, very thankful for um, just the opportunity to have this coin to begin with, but uh, we'll see how this coin goes next time that it goes in. But uh, yeah, that's like the PCGS submission, and uh, uh, let's cut it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like. Comment your thoughts down below about our discussion and also the P the, the coins that we got back from PCGS. Uh, you know, some ups and some downs, but it is what it is. Um, and subscribe if you're new. New videos every week, and we will see you guys next time.